Manish Dalla, okay, come. Let, let me just check first and then uh, okay. just first. Mm hmm, I've allowed you. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay. So today we'll look at strategy formulation, how strategies are actually formed or formulated. One of your assignments, you had the question on the ratios. Ratios is basically part of the strategy formulation because you come up with a KPI as you say, this is what we're going to do. We want to have a net profit margin, say, of 10%. And these are the things that we we'll specifically do to attain this particular KPI. You can come up with different types of financial uh, KPIs. For, for example, for the lenders, you can say you would want to have the interest coverage ratio of about, say, three times what is required for you to achieve that. So we'll be looking at strategy formulation, ladies. Mm -hmm. So this lecture ideally is, is concerned with the principles of strategic planning. In this part of the world where we live in, we do not plan, not even planning for, to fail. We don't just plan. I was called yesterday to go and help one of the units, one of the subsidiaries, our subsidiaries in budgeting. They have, they have departments such as business development. They have a department. They have technical departments and all that. But the budget they came up with was very uncoordinated. So I was asking, how did this capex come in? No, you ask the engineers. I said, no, 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 I'm not going to ask the engineers. I'm going to ask you who is the business development specialist. <clears throat> CAPEX, that is capital expenditure, is not triggered by the technical people. It is triggered by your projected new customers. So the new customers that you're going to have, we should also get to have the historical information of say, per customer, <coughs> how much capital investment do we spend to connect one customer? So once we know how many customers we are going to have based on your projection, then the technical guys would sit to using those numbers to come up with the, your capital expenditure budget. So I started taking them through the process of planning that planning in an organization has to be interfaced. You don't need to sit as marketing. <coughs> you sit, you come up with your own budget. Sales come up with their own budget. It does not work like that. You need to have one of the departments that you call as a principal budget. As a principal budget, meaning this is, all your budgets are entirely dependent on their first budget. Most of the companies, you find that sales is the principal budget. But we need to know how to formulate plans. Mm -hmm. So we are actually saying that businesses must plan and control their operations. For business that do not plan, they will be indirectly planning to fail or planning for failure. Every decision that you make has some component of risk. But we need to know that an organization will have three levels of planning. We we'll have the strategic plans up there <coughs> where you find 
the the CEO and its own, and and his and and her management. Let me assume that is a is a lady and her management. Under strategic plans, up on the, the apex of decision making in the organization, which is concerned mainly with external problems and in particular with deciding which products or services produce for which market. At that level, it is unstructured. So it's not something like you know that if there is no power or you get into a house, you get into your, your, your room, you find that there is no power. The only way you can sort out that problem, assuming that there's power from, from Zesco or whatever, is to just press your switch. That is structured. That is what you find under operations. There it's unstructured. But they deal with external problems to a greater extent. So they'll look at what type of products should we produce? How should we produce these products? Where should they actually be a, a sword or targeted markets? You have tactical plans <coughs> in between. Under tactical, tactical plans, you're saying which are concerned, this is more or less like middle management, which are concerned in ensuring that the company's resources are adequate for carrying out the strategic plans in order to reach the desired objective. This is why you find that you have a hybrid of structured and unstructured problem that you need to solve. Then you have day-to-day -day operations. Those day-to-day -day operations, they actually fit under operational plans, which are concerned with the way in which the company should be run from day to day <coughs> in order to optimize performance. So when you look at a business plan, it's basically a combination of a strategic plan and a financial plan. Usually you would find this for five years. So the financial plan sets out quantified financial targets and a number of metrics that you can use to actually check whether financially you are healthy. I'll give an example of an asset turnover. The asset turnover, because you're saying total sales over total assets. So all you're actually looking at <coughs> are these assets which you have, are they active enough to generate meaningful sales? So per one quarter investment in assets, how much sales is it giving you? You find that if it is going down and you're seeing the ratios going down, there could be a number of reasons there. One of the reasons is that the demand for your products has started reducing. So therefore there's an underutilization of your assets to generate meaningful revenues because it is going down, the demand is going down. It could be outside your control or it is within your control. It is within your control in the sense that you are still selling products that have now become outdated because your competitors have come up with better and more novel products than what you had. It could be that your products are now more expensive than the other products on the market, than the similar products on the market. So therefore, your asset turnover is going down instead of going up. So what does it mean? It means that now you have spare capacity of your assets, which are actually becoming underutilized. In the corporate world, we actually call those assets as lazy assets. They are not able to generate to the, its capacity. It could be that the demand is there, but your, pro, your machines, your assets are aging. Your proper plant and equipment is aging. It's now like my vehicle where you are going to, you are going to, 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 to your village, you reach in the national park, Chaffa. And it only targets, and that vehicle of mine, frankly speaking, it only targets when I have money. And it, it behaves as just my girlfriend, you know. Tamara, on there. So it's always, it's always, last time it got bent, it, it has done all the things that you'd think of. <laughs> Just done everything. So it has left me so stressed. Mm -hmm. You see, so, so 
you, you, all these, uh, this is how you would actually analyze whether the asset is, is, still, is, is still active to generate enough revenues. This is, <coughs> this is why when you look at investment, this, you can also look at asset replacement. I don't know if that is part of your, 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 your topics. I don't know. But there is a topic somewhere on asset replacement. At what point do you, do you, do you replace an asset? But that thing, it has been there. And, and, and people ever, always tell me, why don't you change it? And it's, it's, it's always times. I, I, don't I even want to cry. It's always times when I have money. And it makes sure that it's... Uh. <laughs> so, so imagine now staying here at the minute. They have to get on a taxi, <laughs> went to the office, coming back. It's very stressful. And it's stressful. Yeah. But someone is very happy because she sees me here by 17. <laughs> I'm home. <laughs> I can't make plans to go. And, oh With the taxi, it's impossible. Yeah, so she, she could be happy. So let's move mm -hmm. on. <clears throat> so I think the financial plan set out quantified fi financial targets, which usually take the form of uh, focused financial statements. Mm -hmm. So I was just explaining on an asset turnover. You could have, you could, you could have, a, 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 a financial target, say, on current ratio, where they're saying you want to have your current ratio, which is two to one, meaning that your, as, your current assets, those that are easily convertible into cash, should be twice higher than your liabilities. So what it means that it should be higher than your current liabilities, twice as high as your liabilities, your current liabilities. Because your current liabilities, these, 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 these are uh, liabilities that matures within one year, isn't it? Meaning that within one year, you have to pay back. So if you have, if you have a current ratio, for example, one, one to one, <coughs> and in that current assets, you have inventory, which takes time to be converted into, into cash. You might reach at a stage where you actually start breaching on your commitments to actually liquidating that particular debt, isn't it? Then it starts showing that you, have, you start having working capital challenges. Running an organization demands working capital. It's just like running our own lives guys like this example i'm giving you is a very perfect example about myself and the the vehicle that has assumed it to be getting more than my family mm -hmm. meaning that on a daily basis i have to spend on 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 the, on the, because it's leaking oil i have to buy oil yeah because it's damaged i have to go into a taxi and all that that is, that is working capital. That is operation. It's on a day-to-day -day running. Each time you wake up, it, those who live in capital cities, uh, you would attest to me. In Sanfia, it's almost a free life because you can wake up, you are not spending anything. But in Lusaka, I always tell people, my brother, <laughs> if you want to avoid yeah. costs in Lusaka, just die. Don't wake <laughs> up. Hmm? <laughs> if someone says you say ah, ah come come to come to Chicago's, I buy you some beers, and I say I don't have money. No, just come, I'll buy. Just from me leaving this place, my airport, going that side, I'll spend. Switching on my phone, trying to check what is happening. Uh, uh, on social media, I'm going to spend bundles and the government will get 25% of that as tax. If I say, no, let me just watch DSTV. Okay, luckily I'm not going to pay for electricity, but indirectly I'll be paying for electricity. Mm -hmm. The moment I say, oh, let me just take a bath, that is a cost. It will be built. That is working capital. 
And this is why even when you'll be looking at capital budgeting, there's a component of working capital where the moment you introduce that working capital in that first year in which you're introducing it, whether it's in year zero or year one, you have to show it as a negative. Then it has to be released in the last year. You cannot avoid working capital. So even when you're looking at current ratio, that is a working capital ratio. So now let's look at financial analysis. Had, having been at the center of planning in our company, I've, I've developed one good skill, Tamara, which you cannot develop in a classroom unless you've been taught by me. <laughs> okay. If you give me a financial, and this is what I was telling this, um, at some students from Nigeria, and I was invited to go and the train them at Cafe Goge Regional Training Center. They are coming from an organization called the Enugu Distribution System Company. Mm -hmm. I was telling them that if you give me your, 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 your financial statements, I will tell you how everyone there behaves. Because numbers, are you aware that the financial numbers are not, are not are, are generated by behavior. It's the behavior that generates numbers. So if you are looking at cost of sales, what is, how is your buying behavior? So if you are trying to reduce on cost in an organization, do not target cost, target behavior. I'll give you this Practical example, they had my organization. The time that they decided, because of austerity measures, to cut on the overtime and all those other things. You know what we discovered? I went after three, three months, three, it should be three weeks, three months or two months. I went to collect data from the clinics. I said, give me this data, I want to analyze it. Before and after, the plug was pulled off. You know what was discovered was that <clears throat> a number, a number of employees started going to these clinics and the hospitals. So the number of people who started getting sick started going, Fyah! but there were a number of reasons why they were going there. The first reason was that because you have taken the source of income which maybe they were even overloaded by loans. And those loans, they, they got those loans with the, with the assurance that the, but the nature of their job, Mayra, allows them to be traveling around the country and they'll be getting subsistence allowance and all this. I hope you're getting me. Yes, but then you have put that without canceling them. So they do not have any other source of income. What do they do? They will go to the, to the clinics and hospitals to go and fake illness. There's no doctor in this world who will say, no, you're faked illness. They'll give you tablets, what, 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 those you with all those tablets. But what you are doing is that as, as a human being, you have to fend for your family and for yourself. Jesse, you have given yourself enough space because you will be given three days or four days off duty. So that time, you, you look around somewhere where you can push files. Secondly, because your, your, your creditors, they are now coming to your place of work to disturb you. The Shylocks, name them. So they, that could be another smarter way of avoiding them. Thirdly, you do not even have transport money or fuel to use to come to your office. So that three days, it gives you enough space to stay away. Secondly, the reason was that yes, people are genuinely getting sick. 
There is no bigger pressure, you will know it. There is no bigger pressure than the financial pressure. It's more dangerous than COVID-19, trust me. Because that one, it hits you with a stroke first. So others now start getting this because of financial pressure, their immune system starts going down, compromise and all that. So they'll stay away. Fun enough, others would go and fake sickness there, tell their families as well to go in these other hospitals and clinics, get all that medication which they are given because maybe they're on the scheme and go and sell it in the compounds in the pharmacies so that they make a bit of money for their families. But again, what we started seeing, the trend now of even phenograd started going up because people had pressure. So I hope you're getting the, the, my, 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 my belief that costs in an organization, any numbers, even revenues, are generated by behavior. So if you want to reduce all the costs, Try to understand the behavior which is driving this course. Even at home, <clears throat> even at home, beat yourself, your husband, your boyfriend, whoever, or your parents, or your guardians, or your brothers, or your sisters who are working. Check their behavior. It's their behavior that determines their financial soundness, isn't it? you find that there are people that, that, that get easily broke. Look at their life. you find that most of the time that it goes. They are at KCC. They are in all these other places that I'm not going to continue mentioning because you think that's where I'm found, Tamara. <laughs> I, I didn't even think. <laughs> so... So financial analysis is a very important thing because when you look at it, when you look at the numbers, you will be able to know how the board behaves. If the board is truly competent, you will be able to see it in the financials. You'll be able to see how management behaves. You'll be able to see it. <coughs> the controls that are not there, which would actually lead to employees the way they behave. The board, you will also be able to see the appetite to borrow because you are seeing it, the interest is going up. What does it mean? It means that they are borrowing. But if the sales are remaining at the same level, then the, the reason is why are you, the question is why are you borrowing? When, you're, when your revenue base is not going up, you are increasing your assets, you are increasing your obligations. Hello? Mm -hmm. So even when you are doing this financial analysis, look at it in a more integrated way. For an organization, for example, Tamara, when I look at the financials, for an organization that I, that I would most likely suspect that there is maybe corruption or whatever, when I start seeing the inventory levels going up, whereas the cost of sales is going down, what does it mean? It means that you're buying things that you are not able to use. You're buying things that you're not able to convert into cash, isn't it? Because your inventory levels are going up. Your cost of sales is maybe going down or slightly a level because maybe you're buying them at cost at a cost whatever but your 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 closing balance is actually growing because that is your stock your revenue base has remained the same so then it means that you are buying things Jesse that you have no immediate use for so why are you buying them Hmm. 
So I think what the examiner is after is much more of an overview and being able to determine the key measures and comment adequately. So the following points should be considered. What is it that you are being asked to comment on? I saw a question, a, a question, let me not believe through that question. I saw a question. It should have been, I don't know if it was a new exam on ratios. There are some assets uh -huh. turnover, date of the uh, P, P, uh, P E ratio, which is the price, the mm. market price per share over the earnings, which we call P E ratio, that looks at the risk appetite of, of, of investors. There were a number of ratios, and they were asking you to, to, to compute and comment on those ratios. So you need to know what they're asking you. Do not come up with a solution on a question that you do not understand, that maybe nothing has been asked. So for example, if you are looking at the information from the shareholder's perspective, then growth of hours in the share price would be of great interest. This is where now, Jesse, you start looking at things that you looked at yesterday on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the value, the market value of the shares. Is the market value of you, your share better than it was last year? Are you maximizing through your own dealings are you maximizing shareholders' worth? Because that is what motivates investors to invest. Is their wealth growing? But if you are looking at how well the managers are performing, the growth in the profit, the extent which they, they control, perhaps of more importance, this is where now you're a manager, all you're interested in is profitability ratios. The shareholder is interested in the, 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 the shareholders' the ratios. And there are quite a number of them. The EPS, earnings per share, would want to see whether, the, whether his or her earnings are growing. Would want to see the dividend payout ratio. Are you paying dividends? <laughs> How much are you returning into the business for you to, to, to grow your business again? This is where now you start looking at the uh, RRB to, 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 to estimate the dividend growth. Mm -hmm. Growth. Always make some comment as to the level of growth. Do not just leave it. And, and you know, even when you are commenting on these ratios, do not say the current ratio is two to one. Therefore, the standard is that it should be two to one. The current uh, assets should be uh, higher than the current liabilities. Therefore, this company is doing fine. You, <laughs> you have just stated what everyone else knows. Mm -hmm. But suppose in that current ratio, in that current asset, 90% of it is, is, is inventory, which is not easily convertible into, into cash. So you also need to start desegmenting the components within the current assets for your own analysis. For example, a company that has a current ratio of two to one, and yet it has 95% of it is inventory, is worse off than a company that has a current ratio of 1.5 and it has 80% of what is in there is cash. Because then it, it cannot default, can easily compete that or can easily pay any liabilities, current liabilities as they fall short, as they fall due. So you need to start going outside that robotic way of looking at things because the textbook says this. Tamara Mandela. Never got stick home. So I think the amount of detail required depends on the information available and the number of marks allocated. Always know that Jesse, if one mark is equivalent to 1.8 minutes. So for a question that has two marks, time your watch, know that you should take 3.6 minutes and or below. 
do not come out from the exam and say, I failed to finish because Vince Van Bieden, you were writing my relegate. <laughs> <laughs> True so always just know that principle that one mark is equivalent <laughs> to 1.8 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? So, mm -hmm. so I said the yeah, amount of detail required depends on the information available and the number of marks allocated. But growth in turnover, in profit, in share price are all potentially relevant. And those are the things that you are looking at. Has the turnover grown? By what margin? against the asset. So if you find that, <clears throat> for example, you look at the growth of your assets, your assets have grown by 10%, and yet your revenue is growing at 7%, meaning that you're investing more and getting less. So just that, it will help you to construct your analysis well and make it more coherent. Because you, then you know when you do your asset turnover, it's going maybe slightly uh, lower, or it's not increasing at the level that it was before you added more assets. What does it mean? It could mean that the proper plant and equipment that you have is still very new to an extent that the current employees that you have are not able to operate the machine. Therefore, you are not maximizing in terms of revenue generation using that particular equipment. It could also mean that you bought this equipment in the last half or the last quarter or the last few months of the year. Therefore, it wasn't given more time to help you to generate more revenues. The first that I, I told you that it could be that the machine that you are actually using, very few people know or none of your employees know how to operate it. We saw it with the Ratsa. You remember that Ratsa, they bought this big equipment from Germany, which was supposed to be checking for, is it vehicle fitness, whatever. I'm told it was in, what is this place in Aken? There was some vehicle that they had bought, I'm sure it's still there. You know what was happening when a vehicle passes there, especially this dot com of yours, mine it cannot even be seen. <laughs> it will just say there's no car. <laughs> it cannot see anything. Hmm. But maybe partly it's because they were not trained. You saw how those fire trucks were actually headlining. Each time each time you just check on social media, find the fire truck is, has fallen. Maybe these people are not trained out to drive them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So there are all these other things where they're taken for a course to how to operate. It's not just like any other car. So you need now to start investigating to check what is causing this, that the asset turnover is going down. That's the, the assets are not being utilized to their fullest potential. But look at, look at numbers, look at how is your, your turnover growing? If you find that your turnover is growing and yet your, 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 your turnover is growing, your gross profit is growing, but your profit before interest and tax is actually going down. It means that your operating costs are very high. And why should you have a higher operating costs instead of having costs of sales, which should be higher? Because these are other costs. So you start now investigating and coming up with a very good analysis. Don't write the obvious things. You are above that. So areas of analysis, guys. Profitability, how well a company performs given its asset base. How well is the company performing? Liquidity, under profitability, this is where you find the ratios such as net profit margin, gross profit margin. These are the ones that you use your vertical analysis. 
I always say it that ratios, when you're analyzing income-based ratios, it's better that you analyze them as a percentage, as a percentage of sales. Do you know why? Because all the costs incurred in the income statement, when you open the income statement, JSC, when you check in the income statement, all those costs, they are supposed to be funded by what, Tamara? Sales. Hmm? They are supposed to be funded by sales. So if you find a situation, and you have seen it many times, you find a situation where your sales is lower than the cost, meaning that you are failing to fund your sales, you are failing to fund your operations. You will see the output, the, 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 how should I say, the consequences of failing to fund your operations through your sales can be seen in the balance sheet. Meaning that your trade payables will go up. Hello? Because yeah. you're failing. So you're using the materials that have been given by your suppliers. You're using them to operate your organization but you have no plans to pay the suppliers because you do not have the money anyway. Mm -hmm. So you see your trade papers going up. Secondly, that's what you are going to see eventually. You also start seeing your inventory growing. But at some point, your inventory will start going down. Why? Because those that supply things to you will start demanding for cash basis. Then you start compromising on the quality of your services or products because you're doing shortcuts, you do not have the money. As you start doing that, even those that buy from you will reduce and some of them will not also pay you. Because you find sometimes the people that you owe, the people that owe you, you also owe them. They also owe you. The people that you owe, they, they are actually your receivables. So you start seeing these things. These things, they are integrated, the CVD 1 1. So we go to liquidity, the short term financial position of the company. So, yes, you have recorded your profitability, but maybe this profitability is not translating into liquidity. It doesn't mean that a company that is profitable is a liquid company, meaning that in Andalama, it doesn't mean that. Remember that your income statement is prepared on the basis of what you call matching concept or accruals concept which states that the revenue end must be matched against the expenses incurred in earning it. So it doesn't matter whether it's cash or Nivapan Kongole. And you find most of the managers or management, if they want to manipulate the numbers under profitability, do you know what they start doing? Tamara. Yes, coach. What do they you know do? what they start doing? They start, they come up with a credit policy where they start selling most of their, their products on, on credit. They'll increase, stupidly, they'll increase their sales volume. Mm -hmm. They'll increase their profitability. But under liquidity, it will be able to show. Mm -hmm. Because you will not have the cash. your cash now starts getting suffocated. Yes. With time, you start also mm -hmm. seeing an issue of bad debts and doubtful debts, provision of doubtful debts. So you need to start seeing how these things are connected. So liquidity is very key because liquidity is king. Cash is king.
but that is short term. Also, you need now to look at the long term financial position of the company, which is gearing. How geared is the, is the company? When you are highly geared, it means that you have more Congolese long term debt than your asset base, or your asset base is actually going down to an extent that you have, you have, you have brought in so much debt in it. But Myra, don't just go there for Zambia and just start telling those people in town that uh, of late I've been highly geared. No, don't use those terms. <laughs> Apply <Uploaded up, Jack. laughs> <laughs> Careful. <laughs> so, under gearing, we'll be looking at things like debt over shareholders' funds. We'll be looking at debt over shareholders' funds plus debt. And this debt is interest bearing debt, meaning Zapan Kongole, long term. Very interesting. Hmm. The time that I used to set exams or Zika, even marking, students would rush, go for the financial analysis question on ratios. They think it's very easy. It's not easy. You need to integrate these things. It looks very easy, but it's not. Mm, that's true. Then investors, the ratios. This is where you check on P over E. That is the, the, the MPS, the, the, the market price per share over the earnings the share, you start checking on, on, on EPS, earnings per share, dividend payout ratio. These are ratios that focuses on investors. Yes, you have these ratios, but you're comparing them with what? This is where now we go to basis for comparison. Most measures mean little on their own and are only really useful when compared with something. Even when you look at just the basic principles of human beings, do not say, me, I don't want to, me, I don't want to compete with people. No, you're on this earth to compete. Otherwise, God would have left you in the moon or some planet alone. You are competing with the, the resources. God gave these resources that you have to compete for these resources you see on earth. Just your life, if you are, your life, you are just alone here on earth, it would not make sense. It has to be compared to something. So there are different ways in which you compare. You can compare your performance this year against last year, Jesse. This is a year on year comparison. So you could compare your performance as a human being this year against last year. Last year you failed to eat not even a single chicken. This time you are affording to go into Hungry Lion. You can say at least things, but in Jaco. And, and this is how, when you're given a question, the exam, they'll tell you this, the previous year, the current year, or this company, this company. You can also compare your company with other similar companies as individuals. Coach Carter should be able to compare himself maybe with the Bowman, for example. It is no more. Don't act like no enemy here. Why did you why did you come here on earth if you can't compete? You can't compare your, your performance last year to this year and all these other things. And that is how it is. 
This is why sometimes when we are doing financial analysis, we also get the industry benchmark. Because the industry benchmark, it tells you that in this industry, the current ratio of 1.2 to 1 is no more. Like, for example, in, in these malls, you don't get on credit. So having, having a, 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 a ratio, for example, receiver, receivables days of zero is normal. So you also need to look at the industry. What is the industry benchmark? Do not just dance with the songs that you read in your textbooks. No, look at the, the industry and compare. <coughs> you could find that, yes, your ratio is, 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 your current ratio is at one to one. Maybe the recommended ratio is 1.5 to one. Then they say, comment, then you say, no, this company has to be sold because it's non-profitable. This is why, again, you're given the trend, the past results. Suppose the past results, Tamara shows that you were at 0 0.5 to 1. You went to 0 0.7 to 1 in the second year. In the third year, you went to 0 0.8 to 1. In the fourth year, you are 1 to 1. What does it mean? It means that this company is growing, is promising. So do not come up with a, a recommendation to kill it. Mamwa. Mm -hmm. So with other uh, similar companies, with industry averages, and I've explained to you why you need industry averages. You cannot, again, look at this thing, please. You cannot compare a person in, in, in a Mrs. compound or Kwakuku this is the kwa kwa kwas. You cannot compare them to Kukabulonga. Look at the, the how. Maybe they are in the Mrs. The average daily spend on food is $1. Then you say, no, because in Kablonga they spend maybe, maybe even $50 there. <laughs> $50. $50 per day. Then you start comparing and coming up with the analysis. For what? Look at the averages of those places. Mm. Compare within those averages. It's only social media, Jesse, that has distorted things. This time now, it's easier to, to have a doctor arguing with a person in, in Kwaku. <laughs> on medical issues. You have a financial <laughs> modeler arguing with a person in Karingaringa who actually sells at the market. <laughs> those days, this is why those that were, 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 were well to do were marrying off each other. This time, there will be social distortion. You'll find from Mrs. Kanama Nama Mamenu Joma inbox, you'll find that getting minister's daughter. This is where we are going, because there are there's distortions. But it's not supposed to be like that. The life was designed that within your area, that is where you're going. This is where you find mm -hmm. teachers, married teachers. <laughs> but that's how it works. Yeah. Okay, my section. Uh -huh. So you need to know your lane. Let's move on. So that's why you look at it with industry averages, guys. So common ratios. So we'll look at the list of common ratios. But it doesn't mean because you have been given the income statement, the balance sheet, you calculate all the ratios. It does not mean that. On profitability, you have to choose which ratios you are going to use to amplify what you have seen or discovered in there. You don't look at all the ratios. 
Bole mbaya yonsi na mesu wa mafonsi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you even say, me on yeah. racial financial analysis of Wam. How, what have you had? So think about what you are trying to consider and choose the most appropriate ratios for that. There, there is no one set of ratios, like I was saying. You could analyze your profitability together with your liquidity ratios. You could say, uh, in this particular period, profitability, the profitable, profitability margin went up by 30%. However, it is observed that the that the the trade payables days that the receivables days increased meaning that the company started offering credit sales to boost the profitability i don't think you're getting what i'm saying so you are integrating these ratios because you are able to see what is happening and what management we are trying to trick you, to trick its shareholders because they wanted to show a huge profitability. But what has that huge profitability done to trade receivables? What has it done to, to, to inventory? Inventory has gone up because then now you are actually getting from suppliers more of these items, but you are not paying because you are not also being paid by people that owe you. But your profitability is growing. Your sales are growing. Ah, fear, because your credit sales is actually growing. But in growing these credit sales, you are selling more on credit, meaning that the materials you are using to produce these products, you have to go and Congola from, from, from Tamara, who is a supplier. But because they are not paying you, you are selling on credit, what does it mean? It means that even those that you owe, you are not going to pay them. And this is where you find that your trade papers are going up, your receivables are also going up. So you need to understand this relationship. And your profitability is it? Ma. Yes, I hope financial analysis is making a bit sense before you start looking at the numbers. Yes, coach. In, I don't know if, uh, Myra, you understand the concept. Yes, I do, coach. I do. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, look at this. When you just download any of these financials for the companies or whatever, check, you'll find that a company that shows a very huge profitability and has challenges in liquidity, it means that the trade papers are going up the inventory might not be going up if the profitability is going up, meaning that they are actually using most of these materials, they're turning them into, receive, into revenue. But if that revenue is not being converted into cash, it's actually being converted into receivables. Congole, people start owing you if your inventory is going up. But if you find a situation where your inventory is going up, your trade receivables are slightly going up, you reach at a stage where if your inventory is going up, your trade papers will go up, but your revenue will remain almost at the same level. Ten. These are profitability ratios. There is just to dismantle these ratios in their current form so that next time we meet, now we can start looking at the computations part of it and look at those more questions of yours. Return on capital employed, Rossi. This is one of the ratios that you look at under profitability. All you're actually doing here, you are asking yourself, with this, what is the value of the one quarter that I've invested as capital? So capital employed, this is so much capital that we have put in. How much is it generating in terms of the operating profit? 
this ratio is so important to show the value that it is actually creating. This ROSI, this is basically your return. It's basically your return. But this one ratio can be manipulated. You know what they do when they want to manipulate this ratio, Myra. Under capital employed down there, it's basically your assets. Yes, That's maybe your liabilities. So, but then what they do on the capital employed, do you know, they start selling. Towards the end of the year, they sell some of the assets, which maybe they've considered as less assets. So that, but if you're new Mareta, so when they reduce the numerator, which is capital employed, those two have almost the same level of profit up there. What does it do? It increases the return on capital employed. So they can manipulate Rossi. Secondly, they can, if they have leases, they can, now that we have uh, IFRS 17, it has actually changed a lot of things. On this is actually it's IFRS 16, I think. It has changed, it has changed the whole thing because what they would do, some of their assets, they would actually regard them, list them back, sell them, list them back, and look at that maybe as, a, as an operating list so that doesn't actually feature in there. If it's not operating list, you will financing list, but it is not going to be part of their capital employed. So they can play with all this, manipulate, what used to be called the I-17 on leases to, to increase the return on capital employed. But again, all answers on, on the ratios, guys, they are drawn from your formula. So do not struggle coming up with answers on all these ratios. Look at the formula. Here, there are, there are things that you can do to increase Rossi. It's either your capital employed reduces, which is a numerator, or your denominator increases. <laughs> so what are the things that you can, you can do to improve your Rossi on top the way of profit before interest and tax? You need to go in, into cost-slimming diet. It's not just you people going for dieting. Even organizations have to do cost slimming diet. Hello? As they reduce the cost, the profit starts increasing. But again, the problem with this, they can manipulate uh, revenue by having more of credit revenues, isn't it? Credit. Towards the end of the year, they start selling these things on credit sales, as credit sales, to improve this. On capital employed, we have already explained what they can do to improve Rossi. Net profit margin. Here, all you're actually saying is that this is the excess, this is the bottom line as a percentage from the 100 kwacha that we sell, we are actually making two kwacha as, as, as a net profit margin. And, and these which are turnover based, we are actually saying because all the activities within that are actually being funded, are being funded from your revenues. <coughs> Never miss the gross profit margin. Why shouldn't you miss the gross profit margin? The reason is simple. This gross profit margin represents the core activities of the business. Because that is where cost of sales is. Cost of sales, guys, is a direct cost. 
you can reduce these costs that come after cost of sales, other costs. But cost of sales are very difficult to reduce because they are direct costs. But then how you can improve your gross profit margin Obviously, if your revenue is going up, if you are having discounts, if you are having discounts, you would actually do that. But if the gross profit margin starts going up, it shows maybe there is inflation. Maybe you are buying materials of a good quality, which are expensive. So you could start coming up with excuses or reasons, so to say, that justifies the numbers you're getting under gross profit. And the gross profit margin, if you are doing a trend, say for 34 years, it should remain almost at the same level. The same level. If it starts going up, then you ask yourself a question. It could be that this company has introduced a new product. A new product that is actually a hot sell. And because there is no much competition on that particular product or for that product, the costs are still very low. Whenever you see an upswing of your revenues, it could also mean that there is some one off activity that happened in that year, which actually improved your gross profit margin. One of the things that could have happened, Myra, is that you had a solar eclipse. So solar eclipse, you bought these to my cheap Chinese uh, uh, glasses from Botswana. So you, so you said Tamara, Tamara bought them at two quarters, you started selling them at 10 quarters. And that improved your gross profit margin. This is why you had a spike. Mm-hmm. So you need to create this. And even when you are coming up with this analysis, you say it could be. Don't say this is what happened. You are not good. Always don't use the term when you're analyzing financial results. Do not, and I'll give you a document later on once we start looking at the questions, what to say and not what to say in financial analysis. Even if it is on which I voted, Jesse, even if the bundles that is on where sealer, do not use, even when you are recommending, do not use management must. Never use the word must because then you are commanding management and you might get yourself fired if you do it in real life. Management may consider. The reasons, the possible reasons for the gross profit margin to have spiked from 30% to 40%, it could be that there was a one off activity that increased sales. Looking at the sales during that same period, sales increased by 17%. So it could be that there was one activity that could have triggered the sale increment. It could be that they should, maybe there was one sporting activity or whatever. At least you give a reason like that. Let's move on. Asset turnover, I'd already explained on asset turnover because asset turnover, basically, you're actually looking at your turnover, sales, and total assets, funds. Total sales, total assets. You can, others can look at it as capital employed. How much capital has been employed in this business? And what that ratio really is just looking at is from the capital that you have invested, that has been invested into this business, how much sales is it making? The one quarter investment, how much sales are you making? You compare with the previous year, you compare with the industry average, you compare with a com similar company. So this is just basically defining 
what capital employ, employ, employed is. Shelters funds plus creditors amounts falling due after more than one year. It's long term provision. So this is basically your shelters funds plus debt. So if you have your net profit margin times your asset turnover, you have gotten your asset turnover, you have your net profit margin, and you multiply that, you get your loss. Because this turnover here cancels with this turnover there. Once this cancels, then you have, you have the PBIT, the capital employed there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We move on. Gearing. I'd already explained that there are a number of ways in which you can look at gearing ratios. One of them is where it's debt over equity commana. The other one, and debt, you actually look at interest bearing debt over equity shares. Or you can say debt over equity plus debt. These are things that, again, as we move on to start looking at, start looking at the cost of equity and all that, we start looking at and geared, geared, and there are formulas that support your, your, your way to computing your cost of equity or cost of capital. Interest cover from your earnings from your earnings <coughs> before interest and tax, are you able to pay interest? And what is the industry average? How does it compare with in the previous years, the results in the previous years? Then operating gearing, contribution of a PBI team. Contribution is basically sales in less variable cost. So meaning that you do away with a fixed cost. So you want to check on this all operating gearing. Investor ratios. This part actually looks at the risk appetiteness of the investors, the PE ratio. A higher uh, PE quite, ratio, a higher PE sorry, ratio. Quite, Hello? Uh, can I just look at the last ratio on gearing? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Contribution of our profit before interest? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. PE ratio, market price per share divided by the earnings per share. If it's growing, it shows the perceptions, the good perceptions that the investors have in your company. It's basically a stamp of approval that what you are doing is okay. So your market price is going up. Your earnings could remain at the same level, but if your PE ratio is going up, it shows the confidence the investors have in this company. Earnings per share, these are book values. <laughs> this is the earnings that you've made divided by the shareholdings, the number of shares in issue. Dividend yield. The higher the market price, it is expected that even the dividends will start growing. Remember what actually influences the, the market price per share is one, how much dividend are you ex is, uh, is, is, is being expected to be paid. That will motivate investors to invest in your company on dividends. This is why when we are actually calculating on 
the market price ratio we say e cos do which is the current dividend open bracket one plus g close g is the dividend growth divided by the cost of equity minus the dividend growth because all you want you want to have what you call the x div not come div so you are removing dividend from your cost of equity whatever you get plus the growth dividend growth so what does it mean it means that market price of a share myra is influenced by the expected required rate of return what yes, the coach. investors expect the return to be secondly it is also on the issues of dividend growth is dividend going to grow or it's going to be constant dividend so this is why you have this dividend yield so all you are actually saying is that with this market price how has it, uh, it uh, affected the yield of dividend because you expect if the market price is growing you expect that the, the the management will issue or the directors will issue more dividends to its shareholders this is one of the most important financial element in every organization ibida ibida is basically the operating cash flow because you are adding back all the non cash items such as depreciation and amortization It has now become more common with LBOs, leverage buyout firms. Most companies are using EBITDA as a measure. For example, companies would want to maintain, like ESCOM would want to maintain an EBITDA of 30%. Because after they have paid their operations, all they need <coughs> to remain with is 30%, which they can use to pay tax, to pay, to, pay, to pay lenders, and what remains can actually be used to pay CAPEX C, which is capital investments. So understand these things. These are things that they are, are, are trending in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the corporate world. I'm sorry, coach, just a bit. I was still reading through. Please, 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 please. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, the reason that EBITDA additionally consists that the profit before the precision amortization is in order to approximate a uh, cash flow. On the basis that the precise amortization and cash expenses, I've already explained that. A major criticism, however, of it is that it fails to consider the amounts required for fixed assets replacement. No, but it doesn't. Yes, you could do that, but when you're coming up with ratios, you can come up with a ratio such as EBITDA less as capex divided by. Your debt, your 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 debt payment plus your interest charges, you get what they call debt service coverage ratio, which the lenders look at. So next time we meet, we'll look at this question. Perform all the necessary ratios that we need to perform. 
then look at one of those questions before we go to all these things that we have to look at. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's try to meet on Saturday. On Saturday, what time? Uh, maybe, maybe in the evenings. What do you think? Have <laughs> 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 <laugh